Hello. Uh, so today we will talk about linked lists uh, in our course data structures. Uh, and uh, a linked list is basically a data structure that allows uh, efficient data management. Uh, it is uh, similar to arrays in the sense that we will store uh, data, but there are fundamental differences. Uh, basically, the array, the traditional data structure that we are familiar with, it allocates a block of memory at once uh, and uh, it uh, ar arranges its data as a set of consecutive blocks in that uh, memory block. Uh, in a linked list, uh, the strategy is different. Every uh, element will be a different memory, will be uh, located at a different memory location uh, and those memory locations will be linked to, together through some pointers okay uh, so yeah basically a linked list is made of nodes that are pointing to each other and again the locations of these nodes in the memory is totally arbitrary in an array it is not arbitrary you have this arbitrary block of memory but we, once you get that block uh, all the content is contiguous in an array so you can go to the next item by just doing some arithmetic like adding some offset uh, but in a linked list you don't have any offset you need to follow your next pointers just like here uh, I have this head of my linked list pointing to the first element uh, first node consisting of the data part as well as the pointer part so the pointer part points to the next node, which points to another node, and the final node, the last node, will point, uh, the next of the file, the final node, will point to the null, which we represent with this ground symbol for some reason. Uh, okay, so this would be the first node, and this would be the last node, these are the intermediate nodes, and head is the access of the programmer to this linked list. So it he or she cannot access the middle node in one shot. He or she always starts with the head and then she needs to uh, advance these pointers to come to a certain location. So if your linked list is empty, uh, then basically the head, which always exists, uh, uh, it has the value of null. So uh, it just looks like this. There is nothing that it points to. So it, it exists uh, conceptually but physically it doesn't really exist because it has the content of null which is zero uh, now I will do some nodes to make this useful and interesting and as I mentioned every node will be uh, consisting of at least two fields which are data and pointer this data part can be huge like even megabytes uh, so it there is no bound here really uh, but if you are storing uh, numbers then the data part will be 32 bits which is 4 bytes right so but again you can be storing an object of a class uh, that has huge content in it okay then this data part will be huge but one thing sure is uh, one thing we are sure of is the uh, small size of this pointer pointer is basically uh, 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 an eight, uh, an eight, uh, a 32 bit uh, integer pointing to the next memory address, right? So, this is a small location, small size thing within my node. So, it is not a big deal to store this pointer actually. So, the thing that I mentioned in the very beginning can be visualized here. In a linked list, nodes are not necessarily contiguous, okay? Uh, contiguous in memory each node is allocated with a different new call so as you require them you create them which is the cool part of a linked list but in an array you get the allocation in one shot with some amount and it is the problem what's the amount you will probably overshoot uh, it is better than undershooting uh, but when you overshoot you will be wasting that unused part of your memory uh, yeah so that is the difference and the differences are continuing actually so ad array is also useful uh, and the most uh, prominent advantage of an array is 
this random access thing so since you have this uh, access to this uh, beginning of the array uh, so you know this first element and then to go to the seventh element or something you just uh, add seven times uh, the offset so you start so your offset will be seven you add it to your initial address which you know so you can do random access easily but with a linked list to go to the seventh node you need to do seven iterations you need to call next not call but you, you need to do p dot next p dot next p dot next seven times or in the general case n times so random access will be o n worst case time in a linked list whereas it is just o one in an array so this is a huge advantage of array but but also a slight advantage is there is no need to store pointers but as I mentioned it is just a tiny memory the pointer is so it's not a huge advantage this advantage of an array is the fixed size so once you start with an array you cannot grow it without any cost you can of course but then if you double this size then basically you need to you have a new array of 2n size then you need to transfer the existing n arrays there so it means that you need an o n time work to double your array size or to reduce your array size uh, so this is, is a disadvantage also w what is the initial fixed number right we don't really know it in advance uh, so we generally have dynamic situation going on but if you are implementing a dictionary like oxford lang english language dictionary then the size is more or less fixed right so you don't really add new items every day to that dictionary then array can be okay uh, so depending on your problem really uh, and also if you want to insert something to the middle then uh, like if I want to insert something here then I really I need to shift all the other guys one right so including this one because now a new guy comes here so this block will be shifted one right which will take all n cost similarly for deletion I need shifts so link this doesn't suffer from that uh, intermediate deletion or intermediate uh, insertion as I will show you to insert something between this and this for instance you create that node and then you set the pointer of this to here and the next of this to here and you kill this pointer so it is as simple as that it will take just all one time as we will see later you don't really need to shift anything also uh, another advantage of a link this is the dynamic size of it which means that it can grow and sh shrink as needed meaning that if I want to add something there is no fixed size I can just add it to the end or to the middle as I did here similarly for deletion I can just delete it and there is no wasted memory actually everything that is in your life will be in your linked list not more not less but the main disadvantage is, is this direct access problem random access problem you need to follow pointers which would take on time as I discussed in the beginning uh, but with an array it is just one shot okay so if we wrap it up uh, in general use a linked list if the number of elements that will be stored cannot be predicted at compile time so before the execution time which is mostly the case in my experience so it is one rule the other thing if you are inserting to the middle not exactly the middle but you get my point like uh, not to the beginning okay to anywhere else uh, or deleting from anywhere else then uh, array is not so good uh, but link this is very good uh, and also if you are less likely to do random accesses then you will not get hurt by that problem of linked list so linked list is still a good option let's do some coding then uh, I need to start with a class called node which represents the element the data as well as a pointer a pointer to another node okay so next is a pointer to a node uh, and again I am doing template programming here from C++ as we learned so if the 
uh, I bind the variable during the execution time here if I set it to integer then the element will be integer so you will replace all t's with int and this node so let's also add a constructor here which sets the default value of element to the default value of that type for integer it's a zero and which sets the default value of next to n sorry which sets next equal to n remember this not syntax of c plus plus and what is n if you don't provide anything n will be null if you provide something n will be that thing so that is the node class i also need a separate class called list or linked list we go with list here uh, so this list is the gate to the developer to your main function actually uh, and from this list I can access to the nodes in particular I, I have this head node that lets me access to the first node if I have that node in my linked list so head will be pointing to that node as I fill this up uh, and then this will point to another node if exists through the next pointer of this node so initially head is null so initially I am talking about an empty linked list so I have this head conceptually and a head is equal to null meaning that head uh, so sorry not this but this symbol ground symbol for null so let's uh, add some services to this uh, list class and then you will get uh, better at uh, the linked list stuff so is empty it is a read only function it will not update any uh, member of this class that's why I will make it constant but it is not super crucial actually so is empty will probably and will, will re return whether head is null or not so if head is null then it will return true if head is not null like I have a node with the data of 7 which has an X pointer to a null or to another node, it doesn't really matter. But the thing is, if head uh, is pointing to this, then this 7 or this node is not null, then is empty will be false. First, so remember, this is the public part. Uh, head, is in, head is a private member, so I can't really access to head directly from my main function in a different class. Uh, or from a different class so I need a public function called first which which would return head actually it is it just makes the reading better okay uh, so whenever I ask for the first element uh, it will give me this node with number seven in it so let's also fill this link this I don't know with six here and let's let this link list have only two elements two nodes then it, the, the next of this node will be null let's do an insertion then so to your insert function you expect a pointer p that points to a node after which the insertion will take place so let me repeat uh, the programmer must give me these two information okay so don't expect everything from me uh, so the programmer will give me this p pointer okay uh, like will it will tell me that do the insertion after p and in the insertion create this new data value called x okay so it is the order right uh, sorry first data then pointer so i just wrote it in reverse order so this should have an x and this should have been p but it really doesn't matter uh, so let's stick with the slides uh, notation here so what you will do is i already have this in my life p and p dot next is b so this is already an existing linked list the upper row here then when i want to insert x i will create a totally different uh, i will allocate a memory that is in a totally different location in a totally random location so i allocate this memory and then I will put X as the data member of this node and then I will set the next of this node to the next of P so this will point here 
but this is also not pointing here so it is kind of weird my link this starts from here it comes to a and then it goes to b there is also another thing that i don't have an access so you make that access by setting p dot next so you cancel this p dot next is not b anymore p dot next is this new node from now on okay so this is going to be insertion to the middle case and uh, insertion is the first element or to an empty list will be slightly different so let's uh, analyze it over the code then so this is what I just described to you okay this is case one the insertion to a middle middle-ish point so I create a new node okay so maybe should be uh, okay let's go over here again or let, let me just create an uh, illustration here so I create a new node so I, I already have this uh, link this coming up to this point uh, so P pointer points to this node so this has a value of 7 in it and this the next of this node has already been set before because I already have a linked list so let's let that have value 6 so I want to insert after P so new new remember C++ allocates a new memory and into that memory put data so let's insert 8 so data is 8 I put it here and then remember the uh, node constructor this is the data part and this is the next so what is the next of this node so the next of this node is going to be p dot next which is this p dot next is 6 so basically I set it like this so with the first line here I obtained this configuration but it is not over because p dot next is 6 I want to cancel it and I want to replace it with this new node so p dot next is this new node that I have been pointing through something called new node this is it actually but if you are inserting to the uh, to an empty list then head is pointing uh, head is null okay uh, so what you do is you create a new node okay with data 8 in it and 8.next is going to be equal to head so initially head was null so this is pointing to a null thing and difference is here head was pointing to a null before I don't want it to do that anymore I want head to point to this node so here is your linked list with one element in it so starting from an empty list I have obtained this but it doesn't have to be empty you may already have a linked list so let, let's go with this I have this linked list right just created before seven eight six now I want to insert as the first element to this linked list then uh, I will call this function with head so remember head is pointing here so I create this new node set. so let's insert 4 now I create this new node called 4 uh, remember I am inserting to the as the first element uh, so 4 is created now for is this data for that next is head so for that next head was pointing to here so this is the new for that next is seven and finally head must be updated it will point to this for now so here is my insertion to the first node so my link list is now four seven eight six and since this is the last node there must be null here now you can see some complication here it is not that complicated but at least there are cases so I have separate case when I'm inserting as the first element because then head needs to be updated but for other cases I have this uh, case but now I will get rid of two cases I will use something called a dummy head to make this uh, insertion a single or two lines of code so it is just an efficiency issue actually you can still go with this but uh, trust me this would be even better it will also help in the deletion uh, 
So what we will do is, remember I have this head pointing to the first node, but now I will create a dummy head, okay, just like head. It points to a node that always exists in memory with a weird dummy content called X. Okay, so I really, really don't care about this content. What I care is this is not null. So dummy head is never going to be equal to null. It will always be this. So uh, then you can also consider this as a zero node. Okay, it will if it will make you more comfortable. So this will be your zero node, and the next of zero will be f the first node. So this is the actual data, non dummy data. So if we have this in our lives, then an empty list will look like this. Dummy will never be null, but uh, dummy dot next will be null. So first will be null. Zero is never going to be equal to null. Then the insertion would look like this. Be careful, it is just going to be a two lines of code. There is no cases. Because, uh, so this is just like the before case. Uh, if you are trying to do some insertion to a middle, let's remember six. I have done this before. Seven, I think with different values. So dummy head is somewhere here, the H. It points to something that always exists. Okay. It's a weird content like X. Uh, and this points to maybe not 3. And this points to 6. So if I want to insert something like to the middle, like 8 here, I just go with, oh, then P would be this, right? Uh, then 8, I create this new node with 8. And new node dot next will be p dot next which is 7 uh, and finally p dot next will be 8 so I am golden there there is nothing difference difference is in the insertion as the first item so let's try to insert 2 as the first node I will do the same thing uh, but I will now send here the dummy head which is never null so there is no segmentation fault danger here so what happens create the new node with value 2 uh, and p is dummy head so dummy head dot next is 3 which is the first element so the next of 2 will be that which is this uh, and dummy head dot next is never is not going to be equal to 3 but I will update it to 2 see the same code does the first point insertion first node insertion as well as intermediate node insertion that is the trick actually uh, okay so we will stick with that formation from now on again if you want to zero node you will be getting the dummy head okay which will never be null if you want the first node it can be null but uh, it will always work because dummy head dot next dummy is never going to be null I also have a constant version of this function because is empty calls is empty is a constant function and it calls first so I need to have this in my life. Let's do more services. Find find a data in a given linked list. So do I have a linked list now? So let me uh, let me. Uh, it is quite complicated here. So let's redraw it. Basically, remember our formation dummy head that points to this uh, dummy node that is not null uh, so let's put uh, some items uh, like 3 uh, 5 and also 4 maybe it's enough I guess then the last node will point the next of the last will point to null. Basically, you will go like this: start with the first node. So this is the zero node. This is the first node. Okay, P is this. Is P okay? So this is basically saying that while P is not equal to null, right? This is just a shortcut. A cool programmer does thing does it with only one character. While P is okay, or you can also write it like this. If p dot element, which is three, let's try to find six. Is it equal to six? No. Then I advance p. P becomes p dot next. So this is something we will do 
uh, many many times this is the heart of a linked list advancing pointer p is equal to p dot next so this is the new p now i repeat 5 is not null 5 is not equal to 6 so p is equal to uh, p dot next which is this 4 uh, again 4 is not null uh, but it is not also going to be equal to 6 so p is equal to p dot next so p becomes null and while p so p is null it is a uh, 0 equal to 0 so whenever it is not 0 it continues but when it's 0 it gets out of the loop and I return null because I couldn't find it if I was looking for 4 then it, at that last iteration since when p was here since 4 is equal to for I would return this note and the caller will do something with it deletion or removal similarly uh, but in this case it's called remove I think not delete so remove let's write just rem uh, the user needs to provide me the value x only the x no other pointer your task is to find the node that is previous to x and then you will bypass the node with x there may be other x's in your life the same value you will remove the first occurrence of it okay so as i mentioned you need to find the previous so where is the uh, so this is the remove it expects only one data value like seven then you will call find previous with seven and you will find that not and then do the bypassing so let, let's keep things uh, in motion here basically uh, so let, let's again create a, a linked list with the dummy head that always exists with a dummy entry so I won't even draw the uh, box around it so this is the zero node the first node will be I don't know two then five then F4 uh, okay so let this be the last guy so it points uh, here so let's uh, um, let's also keep another node like let's uh, keep uh, uh, node 22 here and then let this be the final node so I want to delete number 4 okay so then I will I need to find the previous node that is previous to 4 so basically I need to find this node that I, that I will call PR for previous but how do I find it so start with the zeroth node okay why so here be, be careful I don't start with the first node because uh, because of that uh, I might be deleting the first node right so I might I might I might want to delete number two then the previous of two would be the zero node and I need to hit it so I need to consider zero node as well that is the trick so start with the zero node do I have the next of it yes I have a two here so then I won't have any segmentation fault, so go for it. Is 2 equal to 4? No. Then advance the pointer. So P was here, but I didn't like it as the previous node, so this is not P anymore. This will be my new P. Remember, I am going to remove 4. So, again, P dot next, it exists. So continue, but it exists with a wrong number. It is 5. I was looking for 4. So, don't do return. Advance P this becomes p now p dot next exists continue and it also has the value that is my victim which is 4 so it exists so I return this p and I stop because this is my task find previous to 4 which is 5 so remove gets that 5 okay p will be that not called 5 okay so this would be p I don't care the stuff before it then let's copy the stuff here the next would be four that will be the victim and then after four there may be other items like i think 22 i put here so it really doesn't 
rather than I may be even more items but let's stop here so if there is a previous uh, by the way if I try to delete 14 which doesn't exist here then this will never be able to return that previous so it will return null because there is nothing uh, preceding 14 in this linked list then since p is null I do nothing I just quit but in this case I luckily have a previous which is called p then I will do the bypassing what is that uh, I will call this temp this is just for memory cleaning purposes okay not a big deal uh, not very uh, fundamental but this is the fundamental line p.next which is for I don't like it I want p.next to be p.next next or in other words temp.next so let's, let me repeat p.next is not going to be this it will be temp.next okay so this is the situation now this is gone see I bypassed this actually at this time it is okay because your link this comes here and from 5 I go to 22 and then I go to other places but I totally uh, removed for from my life let's also remove it from my memory uh, for the good memories uh, so delete temp and that is why I have kept this pointer so this is just a memory cleaning issue here is a popular interview question I have seen this in Facebook interviews as well as in Google interviews so this is a very cool problem the problem is uh, you need to implement an algorithm that delete a node in the middle but the, the, the catch is the following given only access to that node so if you want to delete 7 normally what you do is you find previous 3 then you bypass it and you get 3 0 4 ok you are done but the thing is you can't call find previous you are only stuck with 7 here so you can't look anything to the left of it and you still want to get rid of 7 so you can pause here or think about it but and I, I, I won't do it I will just proceed uh, so you will think out of the box actually since I have access to this node I also have an access to p.next because I, I don't have p.pre but I have p.next so I will copy this value 0 here okay so I will copy 0 here because I can have I can go there and then I will bypass this node so th because I am still in this node and I will make 0.next equal to 4 so basically I physically removed the other node but I don't really care because these are just arbitrary memory locations the content 0 is preserved and the content 7 is gone and see I haven't looked at anything to the left of 7 so that was the trick it is also a constant time operation there is no iteration or advancing I just do some pointer action let me repeat it on a different example if 3 is the victim copy the content 4 here then I have double 4 and I get so here this part is your original removal right bypass this node connect 4 here basically 3 is gone yeah, so that was a cool question in my opinion uh, print so this is the uncle question then followed by this uh, very basic and stupid action print is you start with the first node then you print the content and then advance the pointer so it is really not that crucial uh, some C++ uh, syntax issue happening here uh, since it is constant uh, uh, the for constant first function allows print to be constant as well okay uh, make empty so I I will be using the functions that I have built so far basically while remember this is inside the linked list class so while the current linked list isn't empty just remove the first element then remove the first first over and over again so dummy head dummy content so let's do don't know three six and seven so will it remove from right to left or left to right this can be only challenge here I will 
Remember, remove just needs a data value. So go to the first element, remove it. I believe that remove will do the pointer action correctly. So three is gone. So this will be the new first element. So then six is gone. And also remember, we didn't remove. I call this delete of C++. So memory is also handled. And then remove. This is the new first. Remove seven. And then I end up with dummy pointing to null. So this is the empty case. So is empty will return true. And I will quit the while loop. And basically, this is what the structures are for, right? I need to clean up the uh, memory. Uh, so the dummy head uh, is a pointer. So it needs to be deleted, but it is not enough because there are there has been other pointers, uh, other nodes allocated through new, so and they are all deleted with make empty, which calls remove, which calls delete in the back. Uh, in the back scene behind the scenes let's do some operator overloading then I want to support this uh, service I want to set L1 equal to L2 so whatever L1 is I don't care I will make the content equal to L2 I can do it like this so let L1 be this again dummy heads point so this is my access so L1 is maybe holding even numbers okay two four blah blah uh, and l2 is again starts with a dummy content it holds odd numbers like one uh, three five their size just don't have to be the same obviously so after this statement l1 is equal to l2 i want l1 to be holding odd numbers okay so i start first of all is this equal to the right hand side so is so maybe user is stupid enough to call this l1 equal to l1 okay set l1 to l1 then right hand side is l1 this is currently l1 they are equal so do nothing because l1 is already l1 otherwise so otherwise i am in this statement they are right hand side l2 is different make l1 empty remember this is the call within the l1 so everything uh, that i call without any preceding dot will be applied to the l1 so make l1 empty okay so two and four are gone forever so this and the dummy head dot next will be null so it is what make empty does I lost all that content in one shot. I don't really care. Now, start with the first node of the L2 because it is the real content and start with the zeroth node of L1 because there is at this time no first node anyway. So start with the zeroth node. So while I have content in L2, insert that content uh, after the P. So P is this so insert it after x so let me draw it clearly this is l1 so this is x initial p is this so insert one after x so now this is l1 x and one now do the advance so p was this advance p here and r was this advance r here and repeat is r okay yes three is an okay value not null so insert three after p so i will make it like this and advanced pointers p is now this and r is one more shot like r is this again r is not null insert 5 after p and i will believe that insert will work because i have implemented it previously so 5 comes here so this is 5 so we see P is equal to P dot next uh, and R is equal to R dot next so R is null be careful and so while R is okay not null it uh, continues but since R is null I need to say goodbye so this is over uh, and return this which is the new L1 so I, I also return L1 uh, because maybe there are concatenations here uh, like let me do it from here. L2 
uh, L3 maybe. Uh, I, I want to support this action so L2 will be equal to L3 and it will be returned and L3 will be updating L1 now. stuff like this okay uh, and so copy constructor again we have studied this when discussing C++ it is basically a constructor that expects another list because uh, the, the copy constructor so it expects this argument of type list and it will be using this uh, assignment operator that I have just implemented basically let's test our link this class now uh, here is the template programming happening link list of type T I will set that type to integer okay so insert number zero after the zero element so this always exists be careful the, so this is the zero element okay it is the zero element so insert zero after zero basically I end up with this linked list then what is happening P is this because list dot first remember this is zero so this is first first fr is it okay fr now I will insert the next 10 integers after P okay so one com comes after P so basically I have this one uh, then P becomes this okay so I will be inserting the two after P so this will be in ascending order two three all the way up to ten okay so quick question here what if I want a descending order so can I obtain this with a little trick so I want uh, my link list to be like this 10 and then next is 9 so when I'm writing think about it next is 8 and then all the way up to 0 so is it possible that I can obtain this I believe you thought of it and hopefully you say that yes by just replacing this with the zero node be careful it's a nice uh, practice here of course this is list dot zero but the thing is the following I will not be inserting the next after P okay I will be always inserting after the zero node so what will happen is this is the zero node first zero comes it doesn't really matter I insert it after the zero node then one comes I insert it after the zero node so it becomes like this and it will insertion sets the pointers so this is the situation then two comes but I insert two after the zero so this part is fixed it is not P so you don't really have to do this line then two after the zero so I have two created 0 dot next becomes 2 and 2 dot next becomes the old uh, 0 dot next so it is going to be like this so C210 and if you extend this idea it will be 10 9 8 blah blah 210 okay, so it was a good practice for you then I will be basically removing all the even members okay uh, and then I will be setting I will be using this assignment operator explicitly or uh, yeah, explicitly and then I print stuff and then I make something empty so it's not really that crucial after this point the same stuff is going on here I will do some variations on this uh, single link list so so far I haven't used this term single link list because uh, there's a single pointer called next uh, and by default when I say a linked list I refer to this one actually but there is a double linked list variation where I also have the previous pointer in, in, in addition to the next pointer there is also a circular linked list remember in the regular linked list the last node points to null but in the circular case instead of pointing to null it will point to the first item so I have the circle effect and I can also combine doubly and circular link lists so uh, we already have a figure so circular link list is useful if you are implementing a turn based game like risk for instance because this player after the last player the turn will come to the first player so it may make sense to switch between players 
and just I described, the next of the last will be pointing to the first node. Double the linked list, so I already have this next ones. Now with every node, so take this node B, it has a next of C. Now I will also keep the previous pointer and it will be useful when you want to do some action in backward order. Uh, so, uh, and this advantage is now I am doubling the pointer size, uh, but as I mentioned in the beginning, the pointer size is just a 32 bit thing, so it is really not uh, big of a deal. But, uh, so not but, uh, so let's do more on this double linked list, so it is more powerful than a regular linked list because I am supporting back movement easily. So, if I want to delete something from a double linked list, so let this be the, remember, the same idea, remove or delete, it expects a value to be deleted, the first occurrence of it. So, I will be deleting value 7, so this has the value 7. So, I call this, I find this node, okay, so this is the uh, node to be deleted. So. Uh, what we will do is the following, I call it the old node. So the previous of the old node is this node, okay? And previous.next, which is this black pointer, it is not valid anymore because this will be gone forever. So I put a cross here and it will now be pointing on old.next. So I create this blue arrow with this statement, done. I am not done though. Now all that next is this, and the prev of it is this black node. I don't want it to be in action anymore. I want that prev to be equal to all that prev. So I, I will activate this blue arrow now. And finally, I get rid of this memory, old node. So all this data goes away from my memory as well as this little pointers. For the insertion, again, user must give me this pointer after which the insertion will take place. So I have access to the current. I create so a new node. I create a new memory, this rectangle. I put X in it. Okay. And the next of it, I will set it later. So it is just now. So new.prev, I am setting this black thing, is going to be equal to current. It makes sense. Uh, new.next which is this black pointer, is going to be equal to current.next, which is this node, okay, makes total sense. Then, I am not over, new.prev, so this thing, dot .next, so it was this node, I cross it over, it will now be equal to the new node, so I activate the blue pointer. And similarly, new.next, so this guy, dot .prev is not valid anymore, I will overwrite it, with the new node, so I will activate this blue arrow. Okay, so it is really not that hard to implement a double linked list. So pre pointer of the dummy head points to the last node. If you want a circular double linked list, just like this. Okay, pre. Uh, uh, sorry, pre of the last node will point to the. Uh, dummy nodes and uh, so on. And from now on I will solve uh, cool problems in my opinion that requires linked lists. So these are like samples from again interview questions just like the one I have done before the removal from the middle thing. So if you, there are even more so I didn't collect them from this address but I discovered this Stanford course site that has other uh, examples for your practice. Uh, so these are my selections. Find the end to last element with one for loop. So here one is important. I can always do one for loop to find the size of this linked list uh, and then given n I will just go last minus n items. Then But then I will be doing one plus more loop. To do it with one loop, I will start two pointers from the beginning and I will let A move n times, B is still fixed, and then they will move together. So what it means is when A is A finishes, B advances to the end to the last element. It 
is the idea. Print a linked list in reverse order. Uh, one obvious answer is to update the linked list, like reverse the directions here. Okay, and actually I will show how to do it later. And then print. So this will be the new head since it is reversed. Then print three next two next one. But I will do it without updating the linked list using a recursion here. This is my input, first node, second node, third node. It calls, so let's go over the recursion here. Since the first node is not null, it means I have a linked list in my hand. Call uh, recursively the same function using next of the first node. So using this second, this part, which is 2, 3. This is not null, so call recurse using the next of 2, which is 3. Which is not null, so recurse with the next of 3, which is null. Now the interesting action begins. The new call begins with null, and basically it is null, so I return. I do nothing because I don't have anything in my hand. But when I come back, so I am rolling back the recursion. I was here with 3, so it has finished its recursive part, which led to this null thing. Then I will print this linked list's first element. So it is already a one element linked list, so I will print 3. So it is also done. Now I am at this rollback, 2, 3. So I paid my debt by the previous recursions, uh, about 3 and null. So 2, 3, I will print the first element of it, which is 2. Then, done. Then come back to this uh, recursive call. Pre recursive part is over. Go to the other remaining part, which will print the first element of this uh, 1, 2, 3 linked list. So it will print 1. So 3, 2, 1 is printed. Uh, obviously, you can also use a stack to put all the content to a stack and then uh, read it from the stack using pops, but we haven't covered stacks yet. So this recursion is neat in my opinion. But now I will show you how to reverse a linked list. So I will update the linked list. So this, if this is my input, like had uh, the first point, the first node is 30, uh, then 25 then 20 uh, and let's also write one more 15 so the idea you can visualize what i will do as follows i will just reverse these directions so basically this will be reversed this direction will be reversed this arrow will be reversed okay 15 will be reversed so if you and let's finish it as 15 so uh, read this link this 15 20 25 so this is what i want right 15 20 25 etc so basically i will be updating these arrow directions i will be negating them let's see how i do it start with three pointers current prev next so initially current is the head which points to the first node so i am not using a dummy head here current is this next of it will be current.next so this will be the next and the prev is initially null which makes sense so see how it will do the negation here current.next be careful is going to right the direction is from left to right it will be whatever prev node is so basically it will be this okay because prev node is this null so current.next is null uh, then what happens? Then I shift everything one, shift everything to right one one step. So prev node becomes so this is prev, this is current, and in the next iteration, next node will be this. Now it will be even more clear. Current, so current dot next. Be careful. This direction so twenty five dot next was twenty, but I want it to be. 30 so oh, I will do this 25 dot next will be this see I negated this direction with that trick then I shift everything to right one step so this will be prev because of this line this will be current and this will be next now let's do it again this is current be careful 
So next is okay. I said it. So current dot next. 20.next is 15 in the original case, but now I want it to be 25. So in other words, I am basically doing this thing. 20.next is 25. So th this is just killed. There is no arrow here now. And then I do the shifting again. So pre becomes this. Current becomes this. And next becomes this. Do it again. Uh, Current.next is... 20 is the previous which is 20 uh, shift again so this becomes P this becomes current and this becomes next do the reversing current dot next so this is the crucial line here is equal to 15 so I do it like this but I won't draw it like this I will draw it this way 10 dot next is 15 advance one more time so this would be the prev this would be the current node and now the next node will be null okay but I still have some work to do here uh, current dot next is going to be 10 so 5 dot next is going to be previous which is 10 okay so uh, it is also done but now be careful uh, there is some more action to do so shift again this is P, this is current, and this is next. So it is, uh, it is still not. Uh, so now this is also required. Now I have created this linked list, which is okay, but there is no head of it. Actually, there is a head which still points to 30, but it doesn't make any sense because 30 is in the very end now. So in the end, I need to set head equal to this node and. Uh, be careful I already pointed this node using the P ah, it is because I just shifted one by one so P still has that information so set head equal to P which is 5 so now see it from right to left head 5 10 15 blah blah and read it like the traditional way, way head 5 10 15 blah blah so this is uh, a useful a nice practice uh, that helps you play with pointers uh, to reverse the linked list. Uh, I will show you more examples like merging two linked lists. So this is, I think, L1 or we see this is L2. At alternate positions. Uh, meaning what? 5 from here, 3 from here, 10, 6. Okay, so I am ki kind of zigzagging. So... I will call this alternate with function. So from main, I will do it like l1 dot alternate with aw l2. Uh, okay. So in that, I will be updating l1 with this uh, content uh, from l2. So there are many ways to do this, but let's stick with the one that is given here so what is happening here uh, you start with the first nodes called P here the now to keep things as simple as possible uh, this function goes like this since P is uh, okay so P exists it means that uh, after P so remember the notation of insert some data to be inserted after p okay so after 5 i will insert some data and that data will be the first element of l2 so it is going to be insert the first element 3 after p okay so insertion will also set this pointer automatically for you and kill this out for you automatically now the cool part begins uh, since i will repeat the pattern i need to get rid of this so l2 dot remove the first element so I, I will remove three from here there may be other trees here but i don't care because i know that it will remove the first occurrence of three so l2 is now like this again the remove function will arrange the pointers for you as we have discussed before and now be careful p equal to p dot next dot next why because i want to make the next insertion which is six after ten but p is at five so p dot next will bring me here, not satisfactory because then I will do five three six. I don't want it. 
I want another next. P dot next dot next. So P is equal to P dot next dot next. So P comes all the way to this 10. And then I repeat the pattern. 10 dot next. So insert this value 6. Okay. Which I borrowed using L2 dot first dot element. After P, after 10. So it does that insertion for you. And the pattern repeats. Nice. So this takes O n time, right? I just move through all elements. Split another problem. Split a linked list L into L1 and L2 uh, such that new linked list will contain alternate nodes. Okay, so odd indices will be at uh, L1 and the even indices will be at L2. So uh, basically, I am going to do a call by reference here. Uh, I already have the linked list in my life, like this linked list, L is this, okay, so let's write it here, L is equal to this, uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, for some reason it doesn't have a, an interesting content. Uh, so from this I will create two new lists, uh, again using call by reference, that's why I won't be returning L1 and L2, it is just a detail, so how to fill them, they are initially empty, okay, so start with the first element, P, okay, uh, since P exists, I insert this P to L1 and be careful, A is responsible for L1 and B is responsible for L2. So insert number 1 after the zeroth element, so initially L1 is like this, right? It always has this dummy pointer, the zeroth element, and initially it is like this. The first element is null, it is empty. So this is the zeroth element. And this is the first element, which is null. Uh, but now, insert number 1, so this is 1, after 0, after this. So I will be inserting 1 after this, and it will set the pointers like this. So, so okay, 1, and then null. So this is the new first for L1. And I advanced A. Why do I do it? Because I will grow it. Uh, like to the right of it I will not add the new content after X I will add it after this thing so I will call this not P sorry uh, I will call this the new A so A was this before now A is this uh, but I advance P because I am done with this one so this is P if P exists I'm it, it may not exist if I am towards the end then I do the same for L2, so I will insert 2 to the beginning of L2, and then I advance P, so P is this now, and I, and I repeat basically, and the only trick here is, I will insert the next item, which is one after this one, because P is this, so I create this node, and I insert it after this one, and uh, the next of it will be the null. So see what just happened, L1 is dummy one one so dummy one one this is this one and this is this one so sorry about the repetition of the content but this is the example and do another problem add two numbers represented by a linked list so uh, 1007 plus 93 uh, 7 plus 3 plus 0 plus 9 there is some carry 0 plus 0 1 and 1 so this will be 100 and 100, 1100. But to do it uh, clearly, to see things clearly, basically I need to pad this with the zeros here, just to align everything, okay? So let's just begin with that. Whichever the closer, the shorter one, so in this case L2 is the shorter, so L2 dot length is smaller than L1, then I will pad L2 with this many amount of zeros so I will implement this function pet it will uh, pet uh, it will so given basically let's do this function uh, the linked list is like 9 and 3 right and the pet is called with 2 because I need 2 the difference is 4 minus 2 2 so I need to insert zeros but I will insert them after the zeroth element. That is the tricky part, because so there is this zeroth element that points to here, 
but I will insert zero after the zero so it becomes like this but I will do it twice because of n equal to 2 after the zero so I will do it like this so now I obtain this 0, 0, 93 okay and by the way I have used a length function here which doesn't exist in the natural uh, basic linked list uh, implementation so you also need to implement this I think it is forgotten here yeah it is forgotten so if you try to implement a length function basically uh, uh, so let's convert something that already exists to a length function so I don't want to write there was a print I think at some point I made fun of it uh, so okay print so I can make this a length function okay length it will return integer then int so how do I make it return the length of a linked list I start with the first element okay so the number to be returned is int s for size because I don't like the letter L so initially s is 0 so while p exists I advance p and I also advance s s plus uh, plus okay and then return s return s so you always need to double check because of this zero and first issue sometimes you overshoot so I think I am overshooting here so starting with the first element so this should have been one right because I already have the first element s is one uh, ah, sorry uh, if I have the first element sorry s0 is okay here uh, if I have the first element then s++ plus plus s becomes 1 and I advance p right uh, if I have the second element s becomes 2 etc if I don't even have the first element then s is 0 so assume that I am given an empty link list then p would be null so I won't be entering here uh, so I will be returning zero which makes sense so okay we have implemented the length function uh, so let's come back here uh, where were we okay so so far so good so I did the padding uh, now I have the uh, stuff ready aligned not ready uh, so I will proceed but I will do like this I will start with the last note I can go there I will add 7 plus 3 uh, and there will be carries or whatever but then the thing is topologically I need to go back so I need a previous pointer okay so I need to convert this to a double linked list so to do that I need to arrange the previous pointer so let's do it using the set press function so how do I do it? Start with the first note, okay? Pre PR previous is null initially. So first note exists. P dot prev. So this dot prev is null because PR is that. But now I will advance it. PR is this for the next iteration. And P is this. So now this is the P. Now be careful. P dot prev. So zero dot prev is going to be equal to PR which is this so I have just set this pointer okay and then I advance so PR becomes this for the third item and P becomes this and I repeat so this function sets the previous pointers as well for you uh, okay so we are towards the end I think the remaining issue is about uh, mathematical stuff like now come to the last note so I, I begin with the first note this is a linked list I need to begin with the head so I will P will be responsible for this list and Q will be responsible for the second list so I will move P here I can do it with this while loop right P starts with the here P dot next exists so I advance P this P dot next exists P is this 
p dot next exists p is this now be careful p dot next doesn't exist so while stops p is here similarly q is here now i have this carry initially zero c is zero uh, i will create a li new linked list as my output so the value to be inserted to the link a new linked list uh, will be the following 7 plus 3 which is p dot element plus q dot element plus the carry which is initially 0 right so I have value equal to 10 if 10 is if value is less than 10 then there won't be any carry that's why I will separate this into two uh, uh, parts so carry will still be 0 but I will be inserting this 10 after the 0 item so this will be the resulting list l3 or r whatever after the zeroth element of it, I will be inserting the value uh, uh, v, which is uh, uh, not less than 10. In this case, it is 10. So I, I need to take the mod of it. Basically, in the first direction, I will be in the else part. 7 plus 3 is 10. So carry is 1 for the next iteration. Okay. But uh, 10 mod 10 is 0, so I will be inserting value 0 here, plus arithmetic, after the 0th node. So this will be the current resulting linked list. Now I will do advancement in the reverse order. P is equal to P dot prev. So this is the P and this is the Q. I am using the prev pointers. And I repeat, 0 plus 9 plus carry which is 1, so 0, 9, 1, it, it is 10, so I am again in the else part, uh, 10 mod 10 is 0, so I will be inserting this after the 0, be careful, I, want, I will grow it from right to left, just the way I want, so I will insert it here, 0, now P becomes this, and Q becomes this, and carry is 1, so here P plus Q, 0 plus 0, and carry is 1, 0, 0, 1, the answer is 1, total, and now I am in this if part because 1 is less than 10. So I will insert it after the x. So, so far, let me write it clearly. The link this is like this. x dot next is 0 and 0 dot next is 0. I will insert 1 after x. So I will put 1 here. And then insertion will set this pointer for you automatically. So this is the link list. 100 part is here. Uh, and there is no carry. Because I was in the if part. Uh, okay, so in the last iteration, finally, uh, P becomes the first node and Q becomes the first node here. Uh, and if we do the additions, uh, we will be ending up with 1 plus 0 uh, plus carry 0, which is 1, right? So you will also put that. Uh, create a new value called one and insert that one so I will be executing this statement insert that one after the zeroth element which is this so x one and it connects to the existing one so I have one one zero zero in my hand and there may still be remaining a carry in the end so then what does it mean you need to put an additional one to the very beginning so you will be inserting the value one after the zero element. Yes, and this is the final question. Uh, what is this? Uh, I want you. I show you before and after, and I want to, you to write the code that makes that effect. So here, a. If you say a, you will be hitting the first value. After is this. So B becomes this. So let's first do B. B, when I uh, say B, I get this node because B is the head. It points to the first node. Again, there is no dummy node, node here. B dot next. So it will set this right. 3 dot next because B is 3. 3 dot next is normally null, but I want it to be 2, which I can get from here what is that b dot so I will get it like this b dot next is going to be equal to a 
dot next right because with only a I will get one and two I don't want to get one I only want to get two and two comes with this everything comes with this null ending automatically so I don't even have to say it so with this line uh, this thing happens and next I am not done yet I want to trim a to trim the first link list so what is going to happen a dot next is null right a dot next is normally equal to 2 but I don't want it I want a uh, so 1 dot next to be null so I set it to null explicitly which is the answer here let's do the other one uh, it, it is similar I guess so a dot next uh, a dot next will be I will need to get b dot next dot next b n n b dot b dot next dot next and 3 comes with its uh, ending null ending automatically so I have this now and now I can get rid of the last element here how can I do it using b dot next b dot next uh, so b dot next dot next is null because it is normally 3 I want it to be null so something like this it is the true answer actually yeah and so it is the end there may be other examples obviously but these are the ones that I personally like and uh, some of them were actual interview questions from big companies so uh, I hope that uh, it makes uh, it clear for you the link list uh, topic is clear now yeah thanks